Welcome back to all of you in this uh, course on computer network and internet protocols. So, till now at the transport layer we have looked into different kind of service primitives. Uh, so, going from there, uh, now we will look into that how you can combine all these service together and develop and complete end to end transport layer protocol. Uh, so, we will look into this combination of multiple service together here and then we will go to the details of the TCP protocol in details. So, uh, as we have discussed earlier like um, at the transport layer whenever you are interfacing it with the application layer with specific application service. So, the transport layer it is providing you the end to end connectivity. So, the, when the transport layer is providing you the end to end connectivity it may happen uh, in, a, in a hypothetical scenario that uh, there are say one single machine which is trying to communicate with another machine. So, this is one desktop D1, this is another desktop D2, they are trying to communicate over the internet. So, this is my internet cloud and there are other machines which are available there say D3 and D4. Now, on this machine on a single machine there can be multiple application which can be running all together say this is a 1, this is a 2, here you are running again one application a 1, one another application a 2, here you are running say 3 applications a 1, a 2, a 3, here you are running one application say a 4. So, that way on a single machine because we are utilizing this kind of multitasking environment there can be multiple such applications which are running all together. Now, it may happen that in a transport protocol that application at D 1. Uh, so, application at D 1 wants to make a communicate with application 2 at D 3. So, these two application need to communicate with each other. So, at the network protocol stack what you have to do? You have to first uniquely identify these machines that D 1 and D 3 want to communicate and that is not sufficient at the same time you need to ensure that the application 1 at D 1 wants to communicate with application 2 over D 3. So, uh, A 1 over D 1 wants to communicate with A 2 over D 3. So, this communication path need to be established. So, the question comes that how will you uniquely identify a machine and then how will you uniquely identify an application running on top of a machine. So, to look into that we use two different addresses here. So, we have the network layer on top of the network layer we have the transport layer and on top of the transport layer I have the application layer. And as we discussed earlier that this part it is implemented as a part of your operating system. And then the transport layers they are sending this uh, end to end segments. So, the packets are going via the network layer, but we are considering a transport layer pipe a logical pipe between these two transport layer entity. Now, to identify this transport layer entity we use this port number. So, this port number uniquely maps this transport entity to a particular application. So, the example that we are talking about that application 1 on D 1 wants to talk with application 2 at uh, D 3. So, these individual applications they are identified over the network with the help of this port number. Similarly, uh, individual machines at the network that are ID identified by the IP address. So, we bind the IP address with this network layer and we bind the port number with the transport layer. So, this transport layer uh, header it uses this source port number and the destination port number that we look into when we look into the details of the TCP protocol and the UDP protocol that at the transport layer header you have to provide the source port number and the destination port number. So, this source port number and the destination port number will uniquely identify the application which is trying to send the data or which is trying to receive the data. So, that is the usefulness of the port number. Then on top of this transport layer we logically define a pipe. So, this is again a logical pipe and we want to implement all the services transport layer services on top of this logical pipe. So, it is just like in the telephone call 
uh, you are making a hollow. So, whenever you are making a hollow, you want to make sure that the other person is correctly receiving your message and whenever you are saying something that hi, how are you, you wait for some amount of time, if, if you are getting the response that hello, I am well, so you are happy that the other end has received your message. If you have said that hello, how are you and you are waiting for some two minutes and no response is coming, then again you will say that hello, are you hearing? Uh, so, so, those are the protocols, those are the kind of logical channels which we are establish, establishing. Now, all your messages like whenever you are saying hello, how are you? This message is embedded to a signal and then transferred over the your physical wire which is there which is to connect your telephone network. So, uh, the same way things happens in the data network whenever you are sending data from the transport layer, the transport layer is assuring end to end that you are able to send the data correctly uh, at the other end of the system and the other end of the system is receiving the data correctly because as we have looked into that the lower layer of the protocol stack starting from the network layer and the below they are unreliable. So, packet may get dropped from there. So, because packet may get dropped from there, uh, the transport layer actually sends that whether the packet is getting dropped from there and uh, if packet is getting dropped, it is identified with the help of that sequence number. If the packet is getting dropped, then you retransmit the packet over the same pipe. So, a unique pipe here. Uh, between two transport layer entity, it is identified with the help of this IP address which is the network layer address. So, at the network layer I have this IP address and here I have the port number. So, uh, I have this source IP, I have source port, I have destination IP. I have destination port which is uniquely identified this pipe. But remember another point that we have discussed earlier like if a system is getting crashed and it is restarting you have to also have an initial sequence number and to avoid the delayed duplicate you need to ensure that that uh, sequence number initial sequence number which you are generating it is not using any sequence number of the forbidden region from the previous connection which is utilizing the same source IP, source port, destination IP, destination port pair. So, that is why this initial sequence number say source sequence number and this destination sequence number they also become part of uniquely identifying this logical pipe. So, in TCP or in a transport layer protocol TCP kind of transport layer protocol we identify this logical pipe with the help of these 6 tuples the source IP, the source port, the source initial sequence number the destination IP, the destination port and the destination initial sequence number. Okay. Now, uh, let us look into some hypothetical primitive to enable a user to write a transport layer application. So, uh, the thing is that uh, if you again remember that at the operating system level, I have the implementation of the transport layer and then the network layer and then the lower layer of the protocol stack and this part is implemented in your inside your operating system and in the user space you can write your own application. Now, if your application say if you are building a chat application uh, and in that chat application if you want to send data over the network then your application need to directly interface or directly interact with the transport layer. Now, whenever you are saying that you need to directly interact with the transport layer, your operating system should provide certain primitives through which you will be able to make your transport layer active and then send the data to your transport layer. After that everything will be taken care of by the transport layer and other lower layers of the protocol stack. But from the application layer you should ask for the specific service that you want from the transport layer. Now, to get those service. Uh, let us first try to design a hypothetical transport layer protocol uh, by utilizing the various services that we have learned till now and after that we will look into the TCP protocol in detail so that way understanding TCP will be much easier for you. So, to look into this hypothetical protocol we are thinking of a client server based application. So, I have a server that server is ready to accept the connection then I have a client, the client can send certain messages to the server. For the timing just think of a hypothetical protocol where the client will send the server as a message like hello server and the server will listen that message and reply back 
to a client that I am fine. So, to do that what the server has to do? The server has to first to be in the listen state. What is this listen state? That um, the server here it is waiting for an incoming connection because see whenever you want to connect to something if the machine is not in the listen state you will not be able to initiate a connection. You will not be able to randomly initiate a connection with any of the machine in the world. The machine need to be ready to accept a connection. So, whenever we say that is a server is in the listen state what we are ensuring we are ensuring that the server is ready to listen some message. So, initially the server is in the listen state then uh, we have the connect state. So, in the connect state from the client uh, you are sending so the server and this is the client. So, the server is in the listen state. Now, from the client side you are making a connect call whenever you are making a connect call then you are actually asking the transport layer to initiate a end to end connection. So, the transport layer will initiate a connection. So, if it is a three way handshaking that we have learnt earlier it will use that three way handshaking for initiating the connection. Then once this connection is established then you can call the send function from uh, your application program to send the data, send the data to the corresponding server. Now, once the server uh, gets uh, this data, so server need to accept the data from the transport layer. So, if you remember earlier that diagram like um, the data will come and the data will keep on waiting on the receiver buffer at the transport layer and from the application you have to make certain function call to get the data from that transport layer buffer. So, for that we have this receive call. So, the server will make a receive call to receive the data from the transport layer buffer. Now, that way you can send that hello message and the server can say I am fine, server can again make a send call to send, server can even make a send call to send for the data and that way this call can go on. So, once this data transfer is complete then you send the disconnect message or disconnect function call to disconnect this particular connection. Now, here the interesting point is this connect and the disconnect call. So, in a transport layer um, if you want to get the transport layer services along with uh, connection established state. So, what you have to ensure that whenever you are making a send call or the receive call you are there in the connect state. That means, before you have made a send call and a receive call you need to ensure that well the system has already established a connection. So, that means to initiate a connection what you have to do you have to uh, write the code in this way that if connected I am just writing some pseudo code then send else wait. So, that is at the sender side ok. Similarly, at the receiver side it will be if connected then make a receive call else wait for the connection. Now, in this case you can see that well every time you want to make a call to the send or receive you have to check that the system is in the connected state. So, if only the system is in the connected state then only you will be able to make a call to this send or receive function. So, that way that way this particular primitive is important because what we say that the transport layer needs to remember the state of the pipe, the pipe logical pipe that we have defined earlier. So, that appropriate actions can be taken. So, if you are making a send call before initiating the connection, so that call is not a valid call. So, we need a stateful protocol for a transport layer. So, what is mean by a stateful protocol? That with every connection you will remember that what was the state of that particular pipe through which you are going to send the data. So, uh, first you have to initiate a connection. So, the system is in the connect state. The example that I have given you that the client is in the connect state, the server is in the listen state 
you have sent a connection request and got an connection acknowledgement. Both are in the established state. Established state means the connection has established. Then you can send the data, make a send call to send the data. The server can make a receive call to receive the data. Even if after that the server wants to send the data, server can make a send call and the client can make a receive call. And once this is done, then you can make a disconnect call to disconnect this particular request. So, this established is the state that the server and the client need to remember before making the send call and the receive call. So, this entire thing we can represent in the form of a state transition diagram. So, this is an important concept with the um, con concept of this transport layer, where if you want to maintain transport layer services, you need to maintain this state of your pipe, logical pipe that you are defining on top of the transport layer. So, uh, this state transition diagram will tell you that on reception of which message, how you are moving from one state to another state. So, let us look into this example in details. So, initially you are in the idle state. Now, in the idle state, uh, so you make a connect call. So, once you have connect call, so this uh, solid line is the client side and uh, this dotted line uh, is the server side. So, you have make a connect call. So, once you have make the connect call, then that time in this is uh, you have made a uh, active establishment. Active establishment means you have initiated the connection. Similarly, the server it has received the connection request segment. So, once the server has received the connection request segment, it is in the passive establishment state. That means, it has got a connection request message then it execute the connection primitive that means if it is a three way handshaking it execute that three way handshaking otherwise it send the acknowledgement and it moves to the established state. Similarly, the client when it gets the connection accepted segment it receive this connection established segment accepted segment and it moves to the established state and in this established state you can start transmitting the data whenever you are in the established state. Now, to come out of the established state you have to disconnect the things. Then again, if the client initiate the disconnection message, so the client connect uh, the, the client execute the disconnect primitive. After the client execute the disconnect primitive, the client has executed it. So it is the active disconnection. After that, uh, similarly at the server side, the server if it receives the disconnection request segment, so it moves to the passive disconnection. Then once it execute the disconnect primitive, send the acknowledgement the server moves to the idle state. Similarly, when the client receive this uh, disconnection request from the server that gives an acknowledgement to its request, it moves to the idle state. So, that way, uh, so this client uh, by executing this connection primitive, it moves to the established state, the server moves to the established state and you execute the disconnect primitive and move to the idle state back again. And um, uh, here you can see that these state transitions are initiated by uh, sending some messages or receiving some messages and whenever you are in a proper state then only you are allowed to do further tasks. For example, whenever you are at the established state then only you are able to execute the send and the receive call. Otherwise, you are not allowed to do that. Well, so, this is the server side and uh, this is the client side that uh, we have discussed. Uh, so, in the context of transport layer till now I have used these terms segment, packet, frame interchangeably everything to point that a network packet which is going over a link. But technically we make a differentiation between the segment, the frame and the packets. So, in general at the transport layer whatever you are getting. So, that is called a segment. So, at the segment is the concept at the transport layer. Now, after getting a segment at the transport layer, you add up the segment header at the transport layer and pass it to the lower layer that is the network layer. So, this entire thing that you are passing to the network layer that becomes the network layer payload and in the network layer that concept we call it as a packet. So, packet the term packet is normally used to denote the 
primitive at the network layer. With that, you adapt the packet header and send this entire thing to the data link layer. In the data link layer, this entire thing that you are receiving from the network layer that is termed as a frame. So, this is the frame payload. At the data link layer, you adapt the frame header with the frame payload and send it to the physical layer for physical transmission. So, the segment it is used at the transport layer. So, in the transport layer, the data primitive we call it as a segment. At the network layer, the data primitive we term it as a packet, or in the context of UDP, we call it as a datagram. And then at the data link layer, we call it as a frame. So, till now we have used the term interchangeably because this terminology has not been defined to you, but now onwards we will use this terminology whenever we are there at a particular layer of the protocol stack. Uh, in the context of flow control, I have used the term frame and uh, segment interchangeably because as we have seen that uh, this concept of flow control is there at the transport layer as well as uh, at the data link layer. So, the flow controls are executed on top of segment as well as it is executed on top of frame. So, uh, we should not have any confusion there, uh, but uh, for the other primitives try to utilize this uh, proper term which is there. Okay. Now, let us look into this entire transport layer process flow uh, by combining all the service primitives that we have learned. So, initially you need to have this connection establishment. So, this connection establishment it initiate a connection by selecting the initial sequence number and whenever you are selecting the initial sequence number you need to ensure that this initial sequence number do not fall within the forbidden region of the previous connection between the same source IP source port destination IP destination port pair and that is why we include this sequence number as a part of identifying this end to end pipe which we normally call as socket in the terms of Unix. Later on we will look how we do the programming on top of a socket. So, the same logical pipe is termed as a socket. So, uh, we define uniquely identify a connection, uniquely identify a socket with these six tuples, the source IP, source port, source initial sequence number, destination IP, destination port and destination initial sequence number. Then comes the flow control and reliability. Once you have set up this initial sequence number, then that initial sequence number will be used further to ensure the flow control and reliability with the help of ARQ protocols. So, this ARQ protocol it ensures the flow control and reliability. So, the sender will not send data at a rate higher than the receiver rate as well as in the congestion control perspective we have seen that the sender rate should be minimum of the network supported rate that means the congestion rate and uh, the uh, receiver rate. Then the sequence numbers they are used to uniquely identify each byte for a byte sequence number or if you designing a protocol with the packet sequence number with fixed size packets then this, um, uh, this uh, sequence number will denote uniquely identify a packet and loss in the communication part it is handled through this transmission in the um, uh, flow based uh, uh, flow based uh, control mechanism window based flow control mechanism. So, you make a retransmission to retransmit the packet. Uh, over that same connection. Then we have the congestion control. The congestion control algorithm it reduces the transmission rate once congestion is detected. So, we have seen that the sender rate I am writing it as S rate is minimum of the network rate and, uh, and uh, your receiver rate. So, this receiver rate is something that is advertised by the receiver with every individual acknowledgement and this network rate the idea is that you apply this AIMD protocol additive increase multiplicative decrease protocol to ensure uh, both efficiency and fairness simultaneously and uh, with this help of the AIMD protocol uh, what you do in case of congestion control you gradually increase the rate and you see that this rate will get saturated when it will reach at the receiver rate. So, ideally uh, let me try to draw a proper diagram so that the things becomes uh, easier for you to understand. So, initially you increase the, so I am, I am here with respect to time, I am plotting the sender rate for congestion control algorithm. So, initially we increase the sender rate. 
So, once so my formula is that sender rate is equal to minimum of network rate and receiver rate. So, initially you start network rate with a very low rate say some 1 kbps and gradually try to increase it. So, whenever you are increasing it the minimum is becoming the network rate after that when the network rate will exit the receiver rate it will get saturated here. So, this is my receiver advertise rate. So, after that once you are experiencing a packet loss you are experiencing a packet loss here. So, once you are experiencing a packet loss you apply this AIMD concept additive increase multiplicative decrease concept to drop the rate again and start this procedure again gradually increase the network rate. Okay. At this point if the receiver advertise some different rate it will get saturated here after that if the network again advertise that well it can support higher rate again you start increasing it based on the network rate uh, it will get saturated here uh, based on the receiver rate and then it uh, increases again and sometime if there is a congestion detection uh, with the help of a loss with the detection of a packet loss you again drop the rate. So, that way the sender rate gradually increases uh, in a transport layer and uh, it helps you to uh, find out the to, to handle the congestion as well as the flow control simultaneously. So, here we can see that this the flow control algorithm and the congestion control algorithms are coupled together. Okay. Uh, so, this congestion control it reduces the transmission rate once congestion is detected and as you have seen that it improves the performance for end to end data delivery. So, dynamically based on this rate you start sending the data other end will receive the data send back the acknowledgement and accordingly will proceed and once you want to close the connection the data transmission is over then you execute this connection closer primitive that close the connection when the data transmission is complete. And as we have seen earlier that although asynchronous closure is good, but asynchronous closure is not possible to implement in a distributed system with unreliable channel. So, we go with synchronous closure with timeout. So, that is all about the basic service primitives of transport layer. Uh, in the next class onwards, we will start looking into the transmission control protocol or the TCP protocol in details, which is widely used in the network. So, around 80 percent of the traffic over the global internet it uses uh, this TCP protocol. So, we will look into the TCP protocol in details, which is a widely accepted transport layer protocol. So, thank you all for attending this class.